Today, after you line your script and you make your shot list, I'm gonna teach you how to schedule your short film. This is one of the most important parts of the whole uh, pre-production process because this is when you actually materialize everything that you're, all the work you already did in pre-production by lining your script, shot listing, getting the actors, everything is laid out. Now it comes to time to put a time and date to the shooting of your film. So it might be a little daunting at first because where do you start, right? That's why I'm here. We have an overhead camera here that shows you the script that I lined recently. This script is for a movie that I shot a while ago called Gym Crack. If you hear my cat meowing in the bag, it's because it's, it's still one hour for his dinner, but he starts meowing an hour 30 before it's time for dinner. So please ignore him. He's not hungry, he's just being a cat. What you have to do is you grab a ruler, one of these. And what you're going to do is you're going to split the script in eighths of a page. From here to here is about eight inches. So you have to divide the script into one eighth of an inch parts. We start right here on top where it says the, the slug line. And we make a little line here that says one inch. So we start, we do a little line there. That's one inch. Then this is another inch right here, around here. Then here, for example, you see the inch four, it's like in the middle of a line. I would just do inch four, like around here. It's not exactly one eighth of an inch. It's a, it's an approximate with everything. You'll see later why an eighth of an inch is important. So then we start going here as well. You see again, five, four and a half, five and a half. There's another uh, around here is another eighth of an inch. Let's do it here and here. Now you would do a line across where you mark the inches and you go, here. So now this is the first page of the script. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Scene one, for example, here has one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven eighths of a page. Right next to scene one, I'll write seven over eight. Now we'll go to scene two. Scene two already has one eighth of a page, so we do one, and we keep. Actually, never mind. This is scene three. So that's pretty good. Scene two only has one eighth of a page. So we go here, scene two, and we do one eighth. Then we keep doing this for every scene in your script. The way we measure how long things take on set and while we're writing is on page length. Now that you did your eighth of a page, you open up an Excel and start doing a strip board. The first thing you need to do is write down which locations you need. And this is important because the whole schedule must be built around locations, actor availability, and complexity of shots. You start with the locations that are named in every slug line. Sometimes these are all different locations. Elias's house, Elias's room, and Mary's room were in the same house, thankfully. So all of these, we could say, were the same location. So that's one location. Then we had poor neighborhood, Actually, Poor Neighborhood was also right next to, to Elias's house in the actual location. But for this example, we're just gonna say Poor Neighborhood is a separate location because technically it is. Bus stop, separate location as well. That's the different color. Rich Neighborhood, another separate location. And Victor's house, finally the last location. So as we can see here by the color coded that I did, we have five locations total. You have to grab all your actors. In this case, I had four main actors. I had Elias, Victor, Mary, and the landlord. And you gotta assign a number to each of them. Usually in order of importance regarding the script. So I have my main character, secondary character, etc. here by numbers. And this is when the fun begins. It's when you start making your strip board. Let me explain. We have all of our scenes from the first scene of the script to the last scene of the script put on our strip board in a specific order with different colors. Column number one is scene number, super clear. Next, we have, uh, next to the slug line, every slug line will tell you at uh, what time of the day and whether it's interior or exterior that the scene takes place. And you put it right there, day exterior, day interior, night exterior or night interior. Some situations account for interior, exterior, pick one. Next we have, the location in the script and a scene summary right underneath. Usually this is the first line of the action right after the slug line. So you just put it there to know what it is. These are the characters that are in that scene. 
This is important. It will become very important later. This is the actual shooting location. This is, a, this is optional to put the actual shooting location, but this helps me with my organization and clarifying things. And next to it, most importantly, the amount of pages that this scene takes up on the script. When you were measuring, you already did that. So now you're just gonna go through and you're gonna say scene one takes three eighths of a page. Scene two takes one eighth. And you do that for every single scene in your strip board. Next, as you can notice, there's different colors. What this means is it gives you a visual indication of whether it's day interior, day exterior, night interior, or night exterior. This little uh, cream color, day exterior, like the sun. This white is day interior, pale green, which is night exterior, and then blue, which is night interior. This gives you a good idea of at what time of the day you're gonna have you're gonna be shooting your film you know whether you're gonna be doing more day shoots or more night shoots it looks by the looks of it that we're going to be doing way more day shoots than night shoots which to me is an amazing thing next i'm going to show you how i would organize this film to give it uh, a good amount of, of shooting just by looking at it overall this is not the final schedule of the film i'll get to that later but first i'm going to show you the logic of how you organize scenes like this so it makes sense here is my organized strip board without taking into account anything else just page length and location you see the first day this is how you organize it you put the strips you put important stuff like company moves and the end of the day with the amount of pages at the bottom here here i didn't include any setup time or lunch time just gotta take into consideration that you have to account for time for those things for example in day one we have three seven eggs of a page a comfortable shooting pace will be between three and five pages a day. Of course, all depending, you know, you can have a very difficult day that's just two pages long, but those two pages are chock full of action. Or you can have a very normal day that's seven pages long, which turns out these seven pages were just people talking on the bench. So there's no hard science here between three and five pages. I'd say it's, you know, a good rule of thumb or good measure to know where to start and how to build out your schedule from there. As we see here, we start the day at Victor's house and we shoot all the scenes there. As, as you can see, these scenes, there's two scenes that are pretty long, scenes nine and scene 11. They take one five eighths of a page. Um, ideally, this would take me a whole day to just shoot in Victor's house, but we're trying to save on the amount of days because shooting less days means you get to save more on budget. We have Victor's house, we shoot the whole scene, uh, and then we move into rich neighborhood. Because Victor's house is ideally in a good neighborhood, then rich neighborhood should be somewhere around there, right? So and, and, ideally these are close together, so the company move doesn't take long, but you have to a, a lot, like a, a good portion of your time to the company move because moving all the gear from one location to another is a very time consuming thing. And if you can avoid a company move in the middle of the day, the better. In this case, we only have one company move throughout our whole film as it looks like here. So we have Victor's house and rich neighborhood. End of day one, three seven eighths of a page. It looks like a pretty simple day to shoot. Then on day two, we have all of Elias's house, Elias's room and Mary's room. Remember, this is all in one location. So we're booking a whole 12 hour day to shoot most of our stuff in that location. And we end the day with two seven eighths of a page. Ideally, maybe, now looking at it like this, we could probably move some of the Elias's house that we have on day three up to day two and make it a more full day because two seven eighths of a page and just like, I know these scenes don't have a lot of dialogue and there are a lot of moving around, you know, this could probably be shot in less than 12 hours. But if you wanna have three comfortable days, they wanna give a lot of time for lighting, moving around, setting up, changing scenes, set design, then two seven eighths of a page in a day will give you a very comfortable 12 hours. And then for day three, here I didn't account for any company moves because I am assuming for the for this exercise that bus stop and poor neighborhood and Elias's house are very close together. You know, these are fake locations. These locations are just like my favorite places I used to visit in Atlanta when I lived there. But here for this exercise, I'm assuming that the bus stop is in the poor neighborhood. It has to look like a bus stop from a poor neighborhood. And then Elias's house, being the location that it is, 
It's also in a poor neighborhood. As you can see, here we are transitioning from day exterior into night exterior. So we don't have to start the day very early in this case. We can start the day, you know, mid morning to like maybe even afternoon. So we do, let's say 11 a.m. and we, we end at 11 p.m. Gives us less of the sun to shoot so we don't have to spend all the time in the world shooting the exterior. And then more padding towards the night where we definitely need more time. And this is a good example of showing you how without taking anything into consideration, I would organize this film in three comfortable shooting days where we shoot three seven eights, two seven eights and two pages each day to get a complete script shot. Now, because I shot this film, I learned a lot of lessons while sh uh, organizing and even before shooting it. So I'm going to show you the actual script board of when we shot this film. Interestingly, you will see that on day one, we we start the same way. We start uh, Victor's house and then we have a company move. But the company move is not towards the rich neighborhood. It's to Elias's room, which means we have Elias's house still for two days. But differently because we are starting the day early and probably ending it a bit early here. Even though it says four five eighths of a page, I know these two scenes, scene nine and eleven, are a lot of dialogue and not too much action. So I'm sure we can shoot, you know, a short three eighths of a page scene and then two kind of long scenes in half a day, a little bit more. So then we have the, the big company move to the next location, which we're going to be shooting the rest of the whole next day. So we move to, to Elias's house where we shoot only one scene, which is day interior, meaning that we can shoot it towards the later end of the day because we can light uh, a, a room inside as day interior since there's no reference that it's night. You know, you just blast a lot of lights through the windows and it looks like it's during the day. You can't do that when it's night, when it's night exterior because you can't just make a dark night look like the day. So this benefits us that we can shoot in the later half of the day because it's day interior. Then that's the end of day one, four or five days of a page. Looks like a very tough day, but fun fact, we finished early that day. We managed to shoot these two scenes do a company move, shoot one scene of the next day, and then when we're done. It's good when you're done early. Please, you know, try that before extending a day too long. Day two. Day two was the meat of the shooting. That's when we were shooting mo most of the scenes of the script. We were shooting from the very morning to late into the night because we were shooting most of the day and we had the whole variety of day exterior, day interior, night exterior, night interior scenes. We had to plan this carefully. Scene five was arguably the most difficult scene of the script and we put it on the top of the day. Why did we do this? This is a steady cam shot, a whole tracking shot in the street with extras and you know, our main character moving around, cars coming through that we had to plan out very carefully. During pre-production, we had to rehearse uh, this scene at a different location. And then we just brought everything to get pedal to the metal, second day, first scene of the day. It's only one eighth of a page but this was going to take most of the time. We shot that and then we shoot scene one, which is a very simple dialogue scene between our main actor and his landlord. This scene could take, you know, since we did scene five at the top of the day and we started, let's say, I remember call time was 11 a.m. We could take two hours to shoot this scene and we'll still have a decent daylight to know that we can shoot scene one, which is supposed to take place during the day. So. We shoot scene five, we shoot scene one, and then we go inside for some of the scenes. This, it doesn't matter what the sun does. We are inside, we got lights, we put them where we need to put them so it looks like it's day interior. And we shoot most of the scenes that happen inside the house during the day. Then we wait. And then we have to wait for the sun to come completely down. This is a good time to do lunch. This is a good time to do multiple setups. It's a good time to start wrapping things up that you don't need. Then we go into the dreaded night exteriors. DPs, like myself, have a hard time with night exteriors because they're the most difficult scenes to light. But in this case, we had a good plan and we hit it straight. So we went, we shot these two scenes, scene 13 and scene 14, right outside of the, of the main location. It didn't take out that long. Again, these are two scenes that are only one eighth of a page, but it did take a while to light them. All in preparation for our final scene 15, which is the conclusion of the film. And it gives you the 
it's one three eighths of a page with a lot of action and a lot of dialogue. I really wanted to take my time with this scene. We have three characters, as you can see here. We have our main character, his sister, and the landlord being part of this scene. And I really wanted to focus, give the best directions I could to the actors, and really give them the time to flesh out this scene since it is a conclusion of the film. So I put it at the end because it was, uh, you know, it was a, a night scene, but this day in the end, you see, turns out to be three one eighths of a page, but this is the thicker day than the first day that had more pages. You know, this had a lot more scenes, a lot more setups, but no company moves and no, you know, no crazy setups aside from the static and the nice here. So I guess some crazy setups. Now comes where we save the most money. We did a third day of shooting, but we did two things. We cut a whole scene from the script, which cut, if, as you can notice, there's no scene seven here. We cut it out. It was just him walking in a rich neighborhood. I said, you know what? We, in the edit, this might work. So then we shot scene 12 with just the main actor. We called him. Uh, we, we decided that uh, day one and day two were going to be shot with one camera and, you know, all the equipment that the school provided us. So we shot it and that was the, the meat of the film. You know, we wrapped most of the crew up that day and we were done. But then me, the DP and like a sound person and maybe like another assistant came for one extra day with the actors and uh, to shoot two very quick scenes on locations that were public. So in this case, the rich neighborhood, we had a scene where he was just walking on the sidewalk, maybe one or two shots. We just got the actor, called him that day, bought him lunch and told him, hey, walk this way. Shot him walking, good to go. Then we company moved and again, this company move is a little, it's difficult, you know? But a company move with a skeleton crew, way easier. You know, you can probably fit everybody in a car and go from the rich neighborhood to the bus stop. Then in the bus stop, we had some extras that were waiting for us there when we got there. And we shot very simple scenes of them hanging out on the bus stop, waiting for the bus to come. Bus comes through on schedule, perfect. We get the shot and we are out. Three eighths of a page shot in less than half a day. We end the day of pickup, so that way we saved a ton of money not having to get the whole crew for a day that required basically fancy or like kind of complicated inserts. You know, it's with people and everything, but they th these were not the main locations that we had to rent, get permits for, you know. These were just public locations. Back then in the city of Atlanta, you, you needed permits, but you could get around being a student, you know, so we just went and did it. And that's how we organized the whole shoot. Things to keep in mind when scheduling. People have to eat at the sixth hour if you're shooting for 12 hours. In the middle of the day, you have to give people food and give them time to digest that food. So that is usually, if you're being nice, you schedule a whole hour of lunch. That I think an hour is appropriate to eat your lunch. If you're running out of time or if you're going too fast, you do 30 minutes or 45 minutes. And the next thing, keep in mind, again, this is very important, company moves take a lot of time. Don't assume because, you know, you only have one company move during the day that it's going to be super easy to move everything from one place to the next. Sometimes you got to pack up a lot of stuff to move it, you know? So the less company moves you have during the day, the better. There might be days that you have to move your crew around a lot. You might have to do one, two, even three company moves. Don't overload that day with a lot of scenes if you know you're going to have to move around a lot. It's just recipe for cutting stuff out on set and not getting everything you want that day. This, again, gives you a great visualization. Like, this is my schedule. This is how I'm going to segment my film in a, in a few days. You know, you can be more specific. I don't really like being that specific because if I start giving shots, you can go and say, like, we have 15 minutes to shoot this shot, 20 minutes to shoot this shot, 30 minutes to shoot this shot. What happens with that is that you end up over analyzing your schedule and you start uh, going too crazy on the length of each shot and each setup, and you end up putting too much pressure on the crew and making it, you know, a very stressful day. Everything here is subjective. You know, a scene can look long in the script and take very little to shoot, or a scene can be very short in the script and take a lot to shoot. It all depends on what's happening. It all depends on what kind of equipment you're using. It all depends on the amount of stuff that you are actually applying to make this film happen. So keep that in mind always when you're making a schedule to shoot your short film. After this comes the call sheet. Now that you have your schedule, you're ready to make your call sheet, but that's gonna be for another video. Oh, 
Fun fact about strip boards, the reason why they're called strip boards is that in the old days when you would print this out and cut the strips of each film like that on the strip board and have a, a cork board and they will start moving and organizing the scenes every day and be like, okay, we shoot this in, this in, and they, they put like, you know, a more physical aspect to this actual schedule of the film. Nowadays, we just do this on a computer, but before you would have the strip and you would go one, two, and you would move, move them around, see with the script, get rid of one, put back another. Thank you for watching this video. I had a lot of fun shooting this, so I hope it really serves you. The next video that's coming up on this channel is about the call sheet. Hugely important. This is the, how you communicate with your crew. Check out my video about my DIY cart and my video about my AC bag. Those are pretty cool videos if you're interested in little, uh, things outside of what the pre-production process is. And enjoy. Thank you very much for supporting my channel.